Warning, trinitrophenol and especially its salts are dangerous explosives and can be impact sensitive. I don't recommend recreating anything you see in this video unless you're a trained chemist. Hello guys, lately I've been asking for some video ideas because I was a little bit bored, but thankfully I had many responses and ideas from subscribers. So I decided to do this funny project of making explosives from aspirin. The explosive we'll be making today is picric acid, also known as trinitrophenol or TNP. Um, the first step of the synthesis will be the extraction of acetyl salicylic acid from aspirin. Quite hard to say, isn't it? I already did this extraction on my phenol video, but anyway, the first step is to grind a tablet with the mortar and pestle. Now we've got the nice powder, very thin, very good. So anyway, now we're gonna dissolve it to isopropanol, approximately 50 ml. I mean, I should have 50 ml, but I don't know how much this is, and it's. I don't know why it's fucking yellow, so... Yeah, anyways. To extract the acid from the powder, we'll do a solvent extraction with isopropanol. Another solvent that works is acetone, which I used in my final video. Basically, the solvent is gonna dissolve the product, but not the other components like starch. And after filtering, I'm just gonna evaporate the solution to hopefully give us some pure acetyl salicylic acid. Low the fucking spider let, let me zoom let me zoom the fucking spider dying in there <laughs> spoiler it didn't work i don't understand why but i just got some weird paste but like it was so contaminated i did not want to use it for the next step so what i did instead is use some old salicylic acid from the final video i think the contamination is probably linked to my eyes propanol being fucking yellow okay boys so in there i have about four grams of salicylic acid i think it's the name and um, here i have a little bit more than 20 milliliters of sulfuric acid the concentrated sulfuric acid um, it's very dirty as you can see but who cares and now we're gonna need to wait out uh how much was it again okay so this motherfucker too slow to explain so i will do the rest Basically, I had to measure 8 grams of potassium nitrate, but my KNO3 was wet, so I dried it on a hot plate before measuring again. My chemicals always get wet, not because I'm so hot, even though I am, but because I live in the mountains and there is an effect called orographic precipitation that's pouring rain on my side of the mountain, and you can see why on this drawing. Okay, now we have the, the dry stuff. Let's measure 8 grams with it. Seven, eight, let's go. Okay, so nice. We have all of our reagents here. We're gonna start. The first step is to pour all of the sulfuric acid and the acetyl salicylic acid in the beaker. But wait, there's something here. I can sense it. I have no beaker! Okay, more seriously, I just used an oil bath and a regular glass jar. This is not very recommended, but it works temporarily because I've broke my old beakers and my new ones are being shipped for Christmas. So next video will be with beakers again. We wait for everything to dissolve and then we will heat to around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. Anyway, what's happening here is that the salicylic acid is getting sulfonated to give almost exclusively 5 sulfur salicylic acid. The small bubbles you can see are carbon dioxide from the decarboxylation of the sulfonated product. And now what we're gonna do is gonna start to add little bits of potassium nitrate in this just like this so this should be a little reaction and if we don't add too much it should be tamed so that's fine so that's gonna be forming our nitric acid in the solution so that's why we need a good temperature of a little bit more than 70 degrees Okay, now I've added everything, so what we're gonna do now, the next step is heat 
this solution to 120 degrees to, to convert any dinitrophenol and mononitrophenol that didn't react enough. And, and for that, I'm gonna change the wild bath to a no bath, which I have the oils. I mean, it's not what's written on the bottle, but you know, whatever. Okay, so this time I'm gonna use some toluene in, uh, in the test tube, you know, to monitor the temperature. So toluene boils, boils at around 110 degrees. So that's not 120 degrees, but you know, it's... All right, we, we don't need too much. They, they should be fine. All right, let's put that in there. Okay, let's go. So the toluene is finally boiling. So we so we're at 110 degrees or something like that. And I don't know if you can see it, but finally there's some reaction in there. Yeah, you can see it. Very good. Nice. Hey, you you may be able to see like an orange gas something and that's actually the, the NO2 so that means we're heating a little bit too much so if this ever happens just just put it back and when that stops alternate you know the next step is to crush the TNP in some icy water usually I use real ice but in this video it seems like I have nothing so I just use some really cold water the picric acid should precipitate and change the color of the solution to a bright yellow Wow, I don't know if you can see, but the color is really splendid. It's really beautiful. Can I focus maybe on it? Uh, the camera doesn't do justice. It's very, very bright. Like, it's it's fucking yellow, like, for real. <laughs> it's, it's fluorescent, it looks like. <laughs> wow, I mean, that's, that's so cool. It's so good looking. Damn. The next step is going to do a recrystallization to get some pure crystals. To do that, we add some water to the solution and heat until everything dissolves. Then, if we cool down the solution to room temperature, the picric acid should precipitate because its solubility is lower in colder water. Yo, I just, um, I've just seen there's some fucking foam and I hate foam, I, I just hate foam, so I'm, I'm gonna get it out, so disgusting. And that's the ability to hold a good grudge. Fucking piece of foam. So I've cooled the solution down to about zero degrees Celsius to precipitate out the maximum amount of crystals. Now we're gonna filter them. And not so much crystal actually dropped out of the solution so what I'm gonna do is take the filtrate and boil it down again on the hot plate until something precipitates and then I'm gonna chill back again onto my, to this fridge right there here you can see the very sharp crystals if the camera wants to focus yeah the crystals are very thin like little spikes or something now, to dry the crystals, you can't heat them on the hot plate, like you would normally do with other chemicals, because obviously it's an explosive, so you you don't want to die, basically. Um, we're gonna use desiccant, like anhydrous calcium chloride, and some paper. This is absolutely not a great method, but it works quite well when you don't have a real desiccator. You know, it's the desiccator 3000. <laughs> I'm putting it in the box, because... It's pouring outside. I don't know if you can see. Oh. Well, anyway. Okay, boys, now it's time for the test. Here you can see I've put a very small amount on this aluminum foil. It, it, it looks like a bigger amount than it is. I don't know why, but like it's, it's very like cloudy, you know? It's so th there's really not much. And, and I don't advise to do the same, okay? Don't, don't do what I do. Okay, take two. I just had a better idea. I'm just gonna light this shit on fire and put it in. Under, so I'm a little bit further away from the detonation, you know. So the unconfined test was a bit disappointing. Now let's test with the confined test. It should be much more funny. Okay, let's go and try with the confined version.
This was much better. Seems like we've actually got some real product this time. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go. Um, to make it explode though, we would require a primary explosive and I don't have one at the moment. But maybe I'll make a video on NHN or something one day. Tell me in the comments if you'd like to see more of this stuff. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna dissolve some nice crystals of Pickwick into some water and see how much it stains it. Because actually, um, Pickwick acid was used as a dye in the past. It's, it's yellow color, you know, it's very, very potent. So let's try to do just a tiny crystal, if I can get one. Okay, see at the end of the spoon. So yeah, with just one crystal, we, we've managed to stain all of this water. By the way, I just made a new Discord server, so if you're into chemistry, the link is in the description. For the generous ones, maybe check out my Patreon to finance new projects. And chemistry is quite expensive, I'm not gonna lie. And yeah, that's it. Leave a comment for a video idea and maybe like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy Christmas.